In this bulletin, the army called in as Bundaberg faces a growing flood crisis. Grafton faces record flood levels, but has the levy worked? And a water warning for Brisbane as the city escapes major flooding. This is 7 News Afternoon Edition with Rebecca Madden. Good afternoon. The Queensland town of Bundaberg and Grafton in northern New South Wales are the centre of this afternoon's flood emergency. Floodwaters are still rising in Bundaberg where more than 7,000 people are unable to return home. Brisbane's breathing a sigh of relief after flood levels were lower than expected. Grafton was preparing for the worst as it faced a record peak. The death toll from the flood emergency stands at four after a three-year-old boy died overnight. So let's go straight to Grafton and Sean Berry is there for us this afternoon. Sean, has the levee system been able to hold back those floodwaters? Rebecca, it has, but only by a few mere centimetres. Now, the clearance was predicted to hit its record high this afternoon at about midday of 8.1 metres. Now, it stopped just two centimetres short of that. The levees around town are said to be 8.2 metres high, but clearly in some areas they are a little lower. And sections of the river through Grafton did begin to spill over it this morning. Now, a few uh, buildings on the south side of the river did get water through them. And here on the north side, a frantic sandbagging effort uh, and, uh, happened and it seemed just a couple of sandbag levels were enough to keep the water out. Now I spoke to one family who defied orders to evacuate. Now let's hear what they had to say about the small wall keeping the river out of their home. Came up very quick, yeah. We went to bed yesterday, last night, and it wasn't even on the wall. Woke up this morning, and at about five o'clock this morning, it was that far off coming over the top of the wall. So, yeah, it was very, very quick. The worrying for you? Oh, very scary, yeah. So, Sean, what's the situation for residents this afternoon and going into tonight? Well, it looks like the, th the uh, flood threat here has eased a little. Since that uh, a high around midday, there's been a steady fall. It's now come down about 15 centimetres and, and there doesn't appear to be a reason for the river to rise again. But the SES at this stage isn't committing that. They're saying they'll still watch and see what happens at this stage. Although the town here may be through the worst, the significant inundation, the levels of water through here means that a large amount of water will go downtown to some rural properties downstream, including the outlying towns of Ulmurra and Lawrence. They have already gone under and there will be more outlying properties to be water damaged, one would imagine. Yes, and of course that huge clean up. Thank you very much, Sean, for the update. Now to Bundaberg in central Queensland where more than 7,000 people have been displaced by the worst floods in that city's history. Jeff Bruce joins us now. Jeff, good afternoon to you. What's the situation in Bundaberg this afternoon? Rebecca, the flood was meant to peak at around 2 o'clock this afternoon at 9.6 metres. I can tell you looking at the water beside me here, it's not coming up any further, but it certainly hasn't started receding yet. So we're probably, hopefully, around the peak and as high as this is going to get. But it's going to be a very, very long, slow process for this water to recede. Jeff, now the uh, Premier took to the skies today. He surveyed the damage uh, from the air. That's right. He's, um, he's been up here twice now. I think he was up here on Sunday. He's come back again today to, to look at the damage firsthand and see what's going on. There's obviously going to need to be a very major recovery effort here once this water does start to go down. Competing priorities with a lot of other places around the state and certainly in the southeast. But Premier Newman has said that Bundaberg is the number one priority. Now, Jeff, the Army's played a big role in helping with those hospital evacuations. That's right, Rebecca. The, the Army started its role, really, with the evacuations from North Bundaberg yesterday with Black Hawk helicopters. They've then been involved with other defence personnel as well in, in getting something between 140 and 190 uh, patients out of Bundaberg Hospital, uh, out to the airport and onto a combination of helicopters and C-130 Hercules to fly them down to Brisbane, not because there are concerns about the hospital going under, but because of difficulties in maintaining power, clean water and just a generally hygienic environment beside a river that's starting to smell a bit ordinary. Yeah, huge operation indeed, Jeff. Just finally, what's in store for this afternoon and tonight? 
Well, everyone's just looking at the water, really, Rebecca. Um, as I say, it's yet to recede. It's unlikely to go anywhere tonight. So the process for everyone is, is really just, just watching and waiting for it to hopefully go down and not up. It's been 35 degrees here today, and in some of these areas, I'm, I'm standing on the aptly named Water Street at the moment, uh, you can really tell that, that, that it's getting pretty ordinary in the water at the moment. So... Um, so it's, it's, it's going to be a long night ahead for the people of Bundaberg. It certainly is. Stay safe yourself. Thank you very much, Jeff. Residents in Ipswich, west of Brisbane, are beginning the clean-up operation after being spared major flood damage. The Bremer River peaked at 13.9 metres last night, well below the predicted 15 metres. Up to 100 homes have been flooded in East Ipswich, but in the suburb of Goodna, 600 homes and businesses remain dry. We're a, a city that escaped a bullet. The, the emotions were running very high after yeah. 2011, especially being hit so quickly again. Um, the recovery centre last night, the evacuation centre, the emotions were very high, but we're so relieved the skies yeah. are blue today. The Mayor says Ipswich has been spared thanks to better management of the outflows from Wyvernhoe Dam. The wild weather has moved south to Sydney with heavy rain and damaging winds overnight. Conditions have improved though this afternoon and Gabrielle Boyle is at Bondi Beach for us this afternoon which has been lashed by massive swells. Gabby, authorities are still taking this very seriously though. They're taking it really seriously. In fact, they closed beaches all around Sydney, right from Palm Beach in the north right through to Cronulla. They say the conditions are simply too dangerous to use boats to go surfing or swimming or rock fishing. In fact, the Bureau were forecasting when I spoke to them this morning that we would get waves up to 10 and a half metres. Now, I can't tell you exactly how high they are here, but I can tell you they are incredibly impressive and very powerful. So much so, in fact, that we're seeing lots of locals here come out to the lookout to the cliff tops to take a look at these extreme weather conditions because it's certainly a sight to see out here. It's, it's a bit like a washing machine, in fact. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, Gabby, what's the forecast like for Sydney for uh, this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow? Look, today in Sydney we were forecast to reach a top of 27 degrees rain on and off during the day. It's been a bit of a situation. We've seen four seasons in one day here in Bondi. I've been here since 9 o'clock this morning. When I first arrived it was really hot, quite muggy, quite uncomfortable. By midday that change had rolled right through from out in the ocean, right through towards Sydney City itself and it brought with it a heap of rain. It brought really strong winds and the temperatures really dropped and it was those winds that caused those extreme weather conditions to really pick up the ocean here in Bondi. Okay, Gabby, if we can go back to last night, uh, Sydney was certainly battered by rain and very, very strong winds. Absolutely. The Bureau got it spot on. They were saying it was going to hit between midnight and dawn and that is exactly what we saw. Really heavy rain, strong winds. It wasn't quite as heavy as they had anticipated but it still was quite damaging. We know we saw quite a bit of water damage to homes and businesses. We know that we saw some minor car accidents, thankfully nothing too serious and quite a few trees on cars as well. So there was quite a bit of damage for SES emergency services to respond to but certainly thankfully no major incident. So it's been an eventful night here in Sydney, but no doubt most Sydney siders' thoughts and prayers are with the people up north who are really doing it tough in these extreme weather conditions. Indeed. Thank you very much, Gabby. And I want to go back to Brisbane now, where residents have been told to conserve water because of pollution concerns. Live now to Kim Scubris. Kim, the Brisbane River has thankfully peaked at a level lower than expected. Oh, it sure did, uh, Rebecca, and it was uh, such good news for residents, particularly here in Torwood Street, Orkinflower, which is in the central Brisbane area. The water rose around quarter past 12 at its peak, and three hours later, you can see down the street here, it's all but gone. Firefighters are already in the street assessing damage, looking at the stormwater drains and just how far up this muddy water came. Now, if you look over here to give you an idea on this white picket fence, that the level on the top there, that brownish level, that was actually yesterday where the water came up in the high tide. Today it came just a little bit lower, so it was actually worse here yesterday than it was today. We spoke to many residents here, one of them, Jess Parry, had just moved in last year and she was very happy that she'd moved her things out yesterday and the clean-up has been kept to a minimum. This is what she had to say. There was a bit of um, leaves and tree plants and things like that. Bin's been turned over, emptied, so, but that's not as bad as what it was last time. 
Kim, just on another issue, uh, why are Brisbane residents being told to conserve their water intake urgently this afternoon? Yes, authorities have just released this and obviously it's just sinking in for residents that the Mount Crosby water treatment facility has actually had some clogging due to muddy water. Now, it could be a number of days before that's clear. So residents are also obviously being very tempted to use the water to clean up. And really, if you look around me with the mud, that's what they're trying to do. But the message is getting out there now. We're trying to get it out there to them as well, that they have been asked to conserve water. With that has been coupled a, a message from authorities the health authorities for people to be very careful in this water. Rebecca, you can smell the stench already as the water goes down. The key is residents are trying to clean up this mud as quickly as possible. It's nowhere like it was in uh, January 2011, but it's certainly already smelling. And uh, residents are being urged to try and wear solid shoes that uh, obviously protect their feet if they get any mud in their cuts, obviously to wash it away. Yeah, some really good advice there. Thank you very much, Kim. Next in Seven's afternoon news, the Queen who's abdicating the throne to let her son be king. Also, why the Prime Minister's partner has apologised for a joke he made.